Good afternoon and welcome to Nigeria Now, where we keep you updated with what is happening presently in the country. I am Sela Elisha Dasho and I'll be doing the program with Rachel Tandy. Good afternoon. Good yeah, afternoon, Rachel. Rachel. All right, we have quite a number of issues. We will love to, you know, table it and then discuss it and you can be part of it. Do remember, drop your comment on our Facebook and YouTube. We are really, really interested in what your own opinions are concerning this issue, especially regarding most of the thing that is on the lips of every Nigerian. What will be the new minimum wage? And we are going to be looking at that, discussing it and see as labor awaits the response coming from the president. I mean, we will record that on Friday. They had a meeting whereby we saw that the committee alongside private um, operational private sector came up with the fact that the money that should be agreed is 62,000 naira. And labor is saying that they are not taking anything that is below 250,000 naira. Now, Rachel, we've, it seems like we've overflocked the issue mm -hmm. of um, minimum wage. But until we get an amount coming from the president, yes. We'll have to just keep discussing this whole thing. And then um, there was an interview recently this morning from the secretary of the NLC. And categorically, the interview was the fact that, you know what, they are not taking anything less than 250. Mm. They are not taking 62,000 naira. They are not taking 100,000. In fact, the way things are moving, if things do not move as they want it, we are seeing that another strike is awaiting Nigerians. Already early in the morning, you and I saw where we saw that, as we said, they are shifting their proposed strike. Mm. So that is to say that whether ASU goes on strike or not, if labor goes on strike, eventually private schools and um, federal universities eventually mm. will go on strike. Yeah. So either way, we are seeing that the strike is just knocking on the door okay. if the government do not what's expected. But I cannot help but, you know what, we saw as well in the morning where even Father and Baka is saying that, you know what, if this 62,000 are that will be the new minimum wage, then everybody should take 62,000 as his or her own take home money. Because we're seeing that, just like I remember you saying that, the same way labor took its time to give a breakdown of why they made the initial 650,000 uh, let the government do the same. Now, I am waiting for what is in the template that the finance minister give to the president because, I mean, I was expecting this to be a Thursday, Friday, and it seems mm -hmm. it's taking so much of time. So maybe the president is trying to do back and forth, trying to do plus minus and see what will be the new minimum wage. But I just think that, you know, Nigerians are tired of the silent treatment coming from the president and they just cannot wait to see what will be this new minimum wage. Because believe you me, Richard, there are a number of organizations that have refused to do employment why? Because they want to know what is the new minimum wage. Can we afford mm -hmm. this or not? Mm -hmm. Already, we're also seeing a number of people coming out with the fact saying that since 2000 is what the federal government can afford as it is presently. That even though we are actually risking it, that more people will be laid off from their workplace mm -hmm. because certain people cannot afford. So a number of you know conversation debates coming up concerning the issue of the new minimum wage that the federal government needs to sign as soon as possible. You know, Stella, you said, just as you said, like, it's like we've overflocked this whole issue. We haven't. I mean, that's what we are here to do every single day. Mm -hmm. And even if the talk of minimum wage will be till 2025, I think we'll keep talking about it. We can't overemphasize it because it's what is happening in Nigeria mm -hmm. right now. And then the fact is, right, that we need a government to prove to us that they cannot pay more than 60,000 naira. Selen. And we also need labor. For me, right, I'm not part of labor. I'm not taking sides. I just need both parties to be sensible. Now, as far as I am concerned, labor have given a breakdown of what they think the minimum wage of Nigeria should be, and what we'll be able to cater for the, the needs. needs. And as far as I'm concerned, when I went through that, we did that last week, we mm. saw it. Rebo is not wrong with such a breakdown, okay? However, in as much as that is what is due wages, there also have, there have to be a look into Despite that being right and due, 
can the government afford it, right? But labor have done their own bidding. Now, what the federal government, as far as I'm concerned, are failing to do is to come out and defend to Nigerians why they cannot pay that amount and why this amount is what they can give. Labor's, labor's job is to try to fight for Nigerians' rights and get what we deserve. That is where they stand. So labor have no business, as far as I'm concerned, proving the money the Nigerian government have. That is not their job. It is you, the government of Nigeria, will come out and say, see, mm. this is what we have. This is how we are operating. Mm -hmm. This is what has been funding wages. This is what we, uh, uh, the revenue that goes to this, 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 and mm. that. And for that reason, this is what we can give as minimum wage. Because you know what? Labor doesn't know the account balance of the Nigerian of government. Exactly. They don't know. We only have the figures that are being given to us. But certain inflows, outflows, and all of that is solely what the federal government of Nigeria, when they sat down and they proposed a budget for 2024 with a, an expectation of oil revenue, it wasn't labor that did that for them, for example. Of course. Exactly. So how is it now in labor's position to be the one to go and dig out and say this is what the federal government, they've done their bidding. And that is where we are right now. Now, how do you expect Nigerians to believe, Sele? that all what you can afford is 60,000 Naira, looking at the lavished lifestyle of politicians. Of course, of course. With an extra 2,000 and it will How are you able <laughs> exactly to afford millions of Naira in monthly wages for the Chief Justice uh, of, of the Federation of Nigeria and all of that, mm. and you tell us you can only pay 60,000? How does it make sense? And by virtue, seller of what minimum wage is. If the federal government is saying this is the minimum wage of the federal government of Nigeria, it's supposed to be for everybody, what differentiates you and I is our allowances, our bonuses, mm. and all the other things that by virtue mm. of mm. position mm. sets us mm. apart. Mm. That's the whole idea behind minimum true, wage. True, true. That's the idea behind it. That if you're in level 13 and I am in level 10, my allowance is what would de your allowance is what makes your salary higher than mine. My take home at the end of the day between between yours and all of that. That is what it should be basically. But we keep seeing this kind of gap created by the government, and you wonder why. And I believe that this is the standpoint of every Nigerian and also of labor. See, recently that twenty-one billionaire was used to build a, 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 a vice president villa. And you can't just help but wonder, Where 21 did the money billion naira seller is not small money. Even by the sound, you will know it's heavy. And when you see it, and we're not saying it's ugly, but did you really use 21 billion naira to build that villa and all of that? And you just can't help but wonder. And we can go round and round and round. So yes, as far as I'm concerned, the federal government can do way better than 62,000 Naira. Mm. And they have to shift the ground. The president has to come out and address this. He has to give Nigeria their due wages. Mm. We need to see sensitive leaders. At 62, there's nothing sensitive, there's nothing selfless about that kind of decision. You know, Richard, each time I you know, um, go through this whole thing, and I, I, I just want to make sense out of the fact that a federal government will take a look at the entire country, mm. look at civil servants, look at the labor, the effort that every Nigerian is putting, contributing to the well-being of mm. this economy. Because believe you me, scrap the entire civil servant, let us see what will become of the Nigerian economy. Mm -hmm. And yet, those are the people you're expecting to pay 62,000 naira. I mean, you and I were joking, it breaking down. Okay, how much is a bag of rice? Forget it. Not everybody can afford a bag of rice right yeah. now. There are people who just concentrate on their day to day meal. Mm -hmm. So, yes. for just today, you buy a measure of rice. How much is it? And then, how about a measure of beans? Right now, it's a farming season. How many people can afford to even go get seedlings to go and plant? And so, just like you said, I just hope that the government will actually be sensible. 
and understand it because as far as Nigerians are concerned, this is a starvation wage mm -hmm, and is. not a minimum yes. wage whatsoever because we are just pushing more numbers of Nigerians to starvation. Yeah. Presently, as it is, we said, it's either you are rich or poor in Nigeria. There is no middle class. Mm, no Forget the yeah. fact that people look so bright and smile, but mm. you never can tell what people are going through. So I'm just hoping that just like, I mean, I, if you ask me personally, I think I am of the opinion with what Father and Baka is saying. Let us all have a 62,000 Naira minimum wage. But of course, am I saying that I do not appreciate the senators? We saw when Aisha Yusuf we say, let us scrap the Senate because mm. we're trying to mm -hmm. cut down the cost oh, of yeah. government because as far as she's concerned, there is no need for a Senate house. Because if you are to ask them, tell us from the very beginning, I mean, till now, what bill have you passed that makes sense? Apart from lines. bill for SUVs, bill to actually renovate your parking lot, which is of no use to Nigerians, bill for cre okay, creation of state was even made by the House of Reps, which mm. is even more sensible because mm -hmm. of one thing or the other. Even the review of constitution did not come from the Senate. It didn't. So you you see, they are beginning to give people more reasons why you know what we do not see why you are existing in the first place. Yeah. So I am hoping honestly that I am not here to put uh, to point a finger at anybody because I keep saying that we need the Senate if you ask me because they are part of the lawmakers. But they should give Nigerians a reason to believe in them and to hope in them. I mean, this is the bill we are hoping, not a, 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 a bill for saying that we should go back to the old national anthem. Richard, personally today, I am offended by the going back of that national anthem, <laughs> but I can't help it. Yeah. It's not my personal opinion about that because that will not add or add to the, to the my take home pay in what, any way. But I am hoping that we'll have lawmakers that will say, you know what, we need to pass a bill that we can see the pain. We keep mentioning the fact that we don't want you to feel that pain, just mm -hmm. listen and take action. But I mean, for the past one year, what action have we seen coming from our leaders that we believe in, that we hope in? So let's just keep our fingers crossed and see how this whole minimum with Richard, I'm just hoping that today will not pass by. But from the we look of things, so. it's already the day is almost over. So mm. I do not know what will be your way. But let's keep our fingers concerning that. Now, still talking about accountability and transparency. We talked about this, I think, last month or so, where Syrup came up with the fact that, you know what, we need this present administration to give us history of the loan that they have been collecting from the time of Obasanjo till the last president who happens to be Buhari. Because we have been saying we are taking loan for this, mm -hmm. taking loan for that. I clearly remember during the Buhari regime, he gave a reason why he kept borrowing and he said it's for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And Nigerians asked him the question, can you please point out certain infrastructure that you've actually made, mm -hmm. that actually made you to keep borrowing? Well, so that we borrowed more we did. If I had almost, I had almost like twice mm -hmm. the price of what it is because yeah. uh, our budget was really, really out of it and a number of people, but then we needed to, with the way our Naira is devaluing every day and all of that. But here we're still sort of saying, you know what, we are not arguing all of that, but we need you to give us a history of all the loan. Let us be able to say, okay, this money was collected during Obasanjo's regime. Mm. How much went into transport? How much went into agriculture? How much, all the infrastructure, I mean, we've been having our power plant breaking down and all of that. How much went into power as well? And yet, till date, we're yet to see anything coming up. And mm. this is not the first time where since Syrup is taking an action, suing a particular body or the government about a particular thing, and it tends to be that after that day, the whole matter is swept under the carpet that we don't hear anything about. But I think that this is one of the matters that should not suffer. Nigerians deserve mm -hmm. to know how much have the government been borrowing. Our, our, debt, um, our, our debt profile is increasing daily. And then, I mean, they have said that whether you've eaten the money or not, Richard, you and I are part of the people that will pay for the, uh, the whole thing, people have been making jokes with all of this. But I think it's important that the government should be accountable and say, you know what, this is it. This is what has been borrowed. This is what we've done. This is what we've been able to pay. And this is what is remaining. I think Nigerians deserve to know all of this information. Well, as far as I'm concerned, borrowing is also a, a, a mirror of our cor corruption in this country. Mm. It reflects our corruption, it, it, it reflects our decay. It shows a lot because 
all I we've seen, right? Mm. Throughout history, administration come and go is borrowing, borrowing, and borrowing, right? Mm. To a large extent, we have more information on how much has been borrowed mm. than how much has been paid back, interest, and all of that. And you know something? We've also had a lot of debt waivers in the past. True. We've had the Paris Club. We've had many times where the, um, 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 the United States of America, the, you know, rather the World Bank, rather precisely, waive it. have waived our loans and all of that. And you know something is that we have from the debt management office how much our revenues mm. keep going into um, um, settling debt profile. And that is why I keep saying that, whew, we have a lot of work to do, Select, concerning transparency. And the more we see these things unfold, the more we know why our leaders will not be transparent about, uh, uh, um, um, about how much they collect, the prof uh, what, will be the, what has been the debt profile, how much was taken. Because come to look at it, if we've had debt waivers in the past, it means automatically we need to know mm. what debt have been settled, what has gone, and which one are we still paying. We don't know which one we are still paying. We don't know which one is left to pay. All we know is the more we are collecting, we don't know which ones we are done with and all of that. We don't have that kind of transparency mm. whatsoever. So regarding loans in Nigeria, we are, we are limited and we do not know enough. And that is why each time I see Sarah bringing certain things to light, you can't help but give them a thumbs up. But in the end, it's just piles and piles of lawsuits in, the, in, 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 in court and then nothing to show for it. No one of those lawsuits have we seen the federal government answering to it. Because if they answer to it, they will have no answer. If they attempt, they will be hanging themselves if they try to, because we know that in the past, it's not all of our debt that have were paid. So we were forgiving. That is the word for it. We were forgiving, mm. and then we moved on. And regardless, I know we've seen charts over the years showing how much certain administration, mm. and the highest spike we've had was with the Tenable's administration, I mean, with Buhari's mm -hmm. administration. And now Tinibu have just stepped in. And well, we can't, it's too early for us to determine mm. how well he will end regarding um, taking out loans and, and debt and all of that. But we've seen the highest with, um, with, with Buhari. And then we've seen the list starting from um, Obasanjo's time, starting from Yaradua, good luck, and all of that. And there are other factors in play as far as I'm concerned, looking at the exchange rate. All of this administration had a different exchange rate. We saw our currency has been devaluing. It didn't start yesterday and it's not about to stop. Those are key factors that have played a major role in this, in, in, in the margin, the difference between our debt profile and mm. all of that. So what will be the outcome for this for Sarah? One thing we know for sure is that the federal government will not answer. Nobody's going to answer Sarah. If we didn't see the last administration, I don't think we would see that of 1999. I don't think we would see that of 2010. We might not see it. But the good thing for me is the fact that these questions are being asked every single day. And then eventually, the government of Nigeria in the future will know that, you know what? The people know what they're doing. Their eyes are on you, and we want some accountability. But then our prayer is that hopefully one day we will have an administration mm -hmm. that will be transparent. But for now, we just kudos to, to Sarah, and let's wait and see what it will mean at the end of the day. No, Rachel, honestly, I just hope that um, the federal government will get to answer this week because it's not all about filing a suit and then nobody gets to answer it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you file a suit, it's expected that whoever you're filing on will answer. We saw where the federal government is 
compelling the state governors to answer the suit concerning the issue of local government autonomy. We saw the court saying that governors need to reply. And so why can't we also have the federal government doing the same? And Richard, this is where I said the need for check and balance is very important. If we had a transparent, honest a judicial system, mm. an honest and a transparent um, legislation, a legislative, of course, we should have them answer to them. Yeah. This is why this is this, this is the loan, this is this. is. The. We saw immediately the Tinubu administration got into power. They were complaining that they inherited so much of mm -hmm. debt yeah. from the Buhari's regime. I think it was, they are talked for about a week or more concerning the fact that this is what we inherited. We need to do this, we need to do that. And I think that Nigerians will not have a problem with the debt profile as far as they can actually see that this borrowings for the public interest, number one. Secondly, they can see that work. Imagine if you go to a public school, Richard, and you can see that there was renovation in the classroom. Students are not sitting on the floor. Mm -hmm. We can see that teachers are paid right on time. Everything is being done. Roads are very good and all of that. Richard, nobody will have time to discover. Yeah. Rather, we'll have individuals that are well-to-do looking for a way to help the government settle this. Yeah. Why? Because they can see the money at work. True. But when we have a government that is wasteful in every aspect, Passing bills and doing things that will not benefit anybody rather mm. than few individuals. individuals. So yeah. what are you going to say about things like this? So I am hoping, Richard, I'm not going to give up concerning it. Of Just like not. you said, we need to give it to state up for, you know, being bold, being earnest, because it's one of the, they have to, you know, hold the government accountable. But we hope that the government will answer. Yeah. Because there's so, so much of loan. Just like you said, let us know how much you've collected, how much rivers, how much is left, and all of that, I think this will help Nigerians to know that, you know what, our money is put to work as well as this is what our government is doing. So let's just keep our fingers crossed yeah. and see if this will be one of those lawsuits that will be swept under the carpet or the government will be accountable and honest and answer concerning this. Well, yeah. Rachel, thank you so much for doing You're welcome, this. Seven. And thank you as well to our viewers. Thank you for you know, um, keeping a date with us on Nigeria. Now we look forward again to doing this together with you tomorrow. So do have a great day ahead. Yeah.